What's going on YouTube? Today I got this 2015 Hyundai Genesis Coupe. I'm going to be showing y'all how to replace the spark plugs on this. Now these spark plugs are due every 120k. This car's got right at about 120, I want to say 125. Customers ready to do it and I'm ready to show y'all. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so I continue to make videos like this to make your life easier. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to pull up on this cover. There's no bolts on it. It just pops on. These little rubber bushings right here. Set that aside. And now you're going to take a 14 millimeter. And take this bar off. This center support bar. Put your bolts somewhere safe. You don't lose them. Set that bar aside. Now on this one, you got to pull the upper intake plenum. On the driver's side, you can change the plugs without pulling the plenum, but the passenger side, you got to pull the plenum because two of the coils sit underneath this. You can get access to the first one, but not the other two. So unless you're doing a four-cylinder tune-up on a six-cylinder, uh, you're going to have to pull this intake, so let's keep going. You're going to want to get your various brackets and stuff out of the way. Undo your wiring harness and get that out of your way. Set those where you know where they're going to be safe. Now, some of these uh, 3.8 liters are a little different. Some have to use a plastic intake. I think the coupes run a metal intake, depending on the year. Go ahead and unplug your map sensor right here. All right, we're gonna have a few various hoses we're gonna have to take off. Starting with the intake boot. It's an eight millimeter. Let's unplug our mass airflow sensor. Now this is an aftermarket. This is not original. So, let's get a 10 millimeter. It's going to be a, probably a little different with the stock. I can pull up on this and just kind of lay it out of our way. Our ten. And let's take our purge solenoid. Normally, if I have the option, I'll just take the bolts, the corresponding bolts that I take off, and I'll thread them on a few turns where they go. That way you don't forget. Alright, now, I always take the throttle body off. And the reason why I do that is just because there's 
a couple coolant hoses that are hooked to them and if you just take the throttle body off and lean it out of your way you won't have to take any of those hoses off and you won't lose no coolant and it's, it's, it's quicker Go ahead and unplug it. Making sure you don't tear your gasket because you can reuse those gaskets. All right, now there's a couple hoses here I think I'm going to have to take off. Let me grab these throttle body bolts. I'm just going to set them up here near the wiper cowl area. <clears throat> now, I don't think I brought a pair of pliers over here with me. Or some needle nose pliers work good for those hoses. Get these little curved ones here. Yeah, I'm all over the place today. I'm by myself today, so I'm working on both sides of the shop. So bear with me if I have to go back to my toolbox. Just twist that back and forth till you break the seal. Pull it off. Kind of tuck that out of your way. Got those off, those hoses off. Let's go ahead and take the brake booster hose off. Just gotta kind of dig your way down there, fellers. All right, now I'm gonna start taking these 12 millimeter intake bolts loose. And Yeah, that's too big. So when you're working all over the place like I am, you tend to have to go back and forth to your toolbox. There's 12 right there. That was a 13. Sometimes I can use these sockets. These are strip sockets. Sometimes they'll grab. In this case, it's not. So. back there set those. and those look like tens and they are I think the tens still on this ratchet Evenly, try to evenly pull up on it. Because it get caught on the studs if you don't pull up evenly on it. And this gasket right here is metal, so you can reuse that too. No need to change that gasket. I've reused those several years and never had one come back with any problems. Now we got down to the coils, fellas. And I keep losing my tools. 
Take your 10 millimeter. Set those up there. That's a nice little spot right there because you're not going to lose them. It's a nice little hole right there. You pull up on your coils. You shouldn't even have to unplug them. Just like that. Grab you a 5.8 spark plug socket. Alright. Now let's go to the other side. And bring my tools with me. Out of my way. And I think that's another, or you can just pull that little piece, pull up on that, push back in that tab, and pull it off that bracket. It's just trapping that coil. Same over here, this right here. Well, I should have took that bracket off anyways. Because it's blocking that coil. Let's set these up in here so they don't fall. There we go. Now, if you're doing this at home and you're using hand tools, obviously it's going to take you a lot longer. But I work fast. So, I'm going to pause this video for a few minutes. I'm still waiting for my spark plugs to get here. When they do, we'll proceed to finish this job. I'll check back with y'all. Peace out. Alright, y'all, I'm back. I got my spark plugs. Took forever to get them, but... uh I got another hour before I clock out, so I got plenty of time to finish this up. So let's get this done. Now you want to definitely get the right plugs. Some NGK Iridiums are what I like to put in these. If you notice, the original ones are NGK Iridiums. You always want to go with the OE plug when it comes to doing a tune-up, especially of this caliber. Let's just drop them down the cylinder. There's no need to gap these. They come pre-gapped. But also make sure you check them to make sure they're not bent. Because if they're bent and they're touching that electrode right there, they'll ground out and they won't fire. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the side that you don't have to have the intake off. Make sure you start these by hand, just a few threads. And those of y'all that don't feel comfortable, do not use a gun if you don't know how to control it. Because these guns have a variable trigger on them, I can control the torque. We're just going to run them down gently. Take my ratchet and give them a nice final little snug. Put 
your coils back in. Make sure I can see what I'm doing here, y'all. Starting to get dark a lot earlier right now. It's going to be dark when I come to work and it's dark when I leave work. Makes you feel like you've been here a lot longer than eight hours. Let's lock them down, nothing too crazy. Just a little snug. Grab that bracket. Clip that back to it and then tighten the bolt. All right, this side's done. All right, back to the hard side. Ten. All right, it's time to put that intake back on now. Slide our throttle body back on while we got wiggle room. Just like that. Get all your bolts started by hand, of course. And nuts. I'm 
All right. Grab your 12. That's the 14. There's 12 hiding on me. Just work the corners. Get on there. Just nice and snug. Now, your tin. Just like that. Now your wire harness. Go ahead and grab my throttle body bolts. I'm going to start all these tins and then run them all down. Slip that hose on. Oops. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's very adjustable. It's tow. Oh, sometimes people ask me the dumbest questions, especially when it's always when I'm doing a video. Go ahead and slip these clamps back on. Okay, this bracket goes on the bottom right here. Go ahead and plug her back in there. Grab your purge solenoid. Slip your hose back on. Right. 
Now the stock one is not going to be like this, so keep that in mind. Make sure your hose is slipped over all the way. Gotta find that eight. There it is. Go ahead and tighten these clamps first. Alright. Now to the 10. pretty sure we got it all now I dropped that bolt somewhere I'm gonna have to go dig one up uh, or try to find the one that fell down there in the skid plate somewhere but no big deal if not I can find one in my uh, spare bolt drawer that every tech should have if you're established Let's go in there and fire up real quick make sure she's running right Good to me. Now that check engine light's probably on because I unplugged so much stuff. Anyways, no big deal. I hope this video has been informative to y'all. Please check like down below and please subscribe. Y'all have a good day. Peace out, YouTube.